Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is June 16th, 2016. Welcome to the midweek strategy webinar, even though it's a little closer to the end of the week. It's Thursday. Um, uh, lots of intraday volatility here, of course. Uh, the good thing about looking at a chart like this, this is a Euro dollar daily chart, is you know, keep it simple, right? In essence, what we've got is a bullish channel. Uh, and it looks like you continue to rally from support. I mean, look at where today's low is. 111.30. That's the, uh, the monthly opening price also support from a pitchfork this goes way back to the March low so you know if you can't tell um, the way that I'm looking and have been kind of looking at these uh, these markets uh, moving forward uh, is that you know I'm of the mind and I put out that special report not long ago about uh, the euro and the dollar, the idea being, here we go, euro. The idea being that we've made our low, all right? Um, and that we're going to like 130 or so. Could be over the next few months, could be longer. So then when you zoom in and you're looking at, you know, a short term chart, short term chart relative to this chart, it's a monthly chart. Um, you see that, you know, we've got this bullish structure. So here's the thing. Uh, even if this were to break, I wouldn't go full full on bearish on this thing either, because you'd still have the long term trend line down here. It's not on this chart, but it's down here near the 10870 region. Um, but I'm looking for this to hold, this, you know, uh, this trend line to hold, okay? And I don't know, maybe today's low was, was something of a more important low. Um, you know, here's the, the near-term stuff. This is an hourly chart. And if, you know, your resistance, I guess, would be up here on 1275 or so. Um, 1275 is just, to, you know, the really short term channel. Okay. Uh, which was also down here at the lows today. So the way the market's reacting down here, I mean, uh, you know, to me, it's, it seems like it's, there's no reason to get all worried, uh, that the euro is going lower. I still like it higher. And that's that's that all right so big picture question i know you were very bullish big picture on pound uh yeah well i was we were long we got stopped out though break even so um i'm kind of nothing on pound at this point i actually had a long uh and i got stopped out today Personally, at 140.70, of course, it's come right back. But uh, at this point, I, there's just no reason to look at the pound until it starts to, until you get past all this Brexit bullshit, to be honest. I don't have any reason to look at it. I mean, I guess on this chart, you could make the case that daily reversal support is 139.14, and that if, is with a lower parallel, and that would be... Um, Looks like early next week. It looks like it's on Monday, actually. So, <clears throat> Leon asking, is Pound saying something big picture about Euro? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, the Euro's the Euro and the Pound's the Pound. So, you know, I'm looking at the Euro to trade the Euro. And if I'm trading the Pound, I'll trade the Pound. I mean, the Euro has come into support and held it today, right? Um, so I, you know, it's holding this level. I mean, I like, I like the upside on the Euro 
and you know, especially with it coming off where we've come off, uh, you know, let's just let's just get to the charts here. Um, you know, with pound, it's to me this is kind of indecipherable. At this at this point, I don't have anything all that uh, special to tell you. Uh, I guess you could say that we could be at resistance here now because this is the former support channel that was resistance. It's basically the neckline, right? Like this is what made me bullish pound when we held that thing on 516. Okay, started going higher. We bought it here. We got a really good rally, held on, was looking higher. It just fell apart. Um, and now we're back down here, you know, testing, got almost close to 140 today, which was actually the April low. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, again, maybe 139.13, I, you know, I don't know, you know, this level up here, the trend line that you broke, this is still possible resistance. It looks to be about 143.30, which is actually the high from uh, Monday, right? So that would be right there. You know, there's the the 143.30 former trend line there. Um, you know, the only way to kind of operate around in these kind of types of environments. I mean, it's too fast for me to like be like here, go long here, go short here, or whatever. But when I'm you know giving out levels, like you know that's those levels. So if I'm saying like this morning 111.30, 36, the big level, whatever. Okay, we hit it, it's support. Um, you know. It, Dollar CAD triangle. There's a triangle line. Hit it to a T. Okay. Uh, have come off hard. I actually think Dollar CAD's still bullish because crude oil's broken the trend line as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, combining these two, of course, Euro and Dollar CAD, you get Euro CAD, which is acting pretty well. Uh, but let's move on. Okay, let's move on. So there is. There's what we've got there as far as the Euro's concerned. Um, I, you know, see how the day finishes here that it's really important, I think, to in market conditions like these, there's, you know, different types. There's three types of markets as far as trends are concerned. OK, up, down and sideways. We've been in a sideways market since March of 2015. So um, it's one of the longer ranges we've had in history. In fact. Check this out. So here, here's a little indicator I wrote that shows you the amount of time that you've spent uh, between, you can have it say how many times you've been above a 52 week low, how many times you've been below a 52 week high, or how many weeks that you've been between the 52 week low and high. Okay, so in this case, this is on closing basis. On this case, um, the dollar index actually spent 58 weeks without making a, a fresh 52 week higher low. That was actually the exact same amount of time that it took for the consolidation that was you know, throughout 2013 and 2014, and that's when we got the big breakout, right? Big breakouts happen from big consolidations. Okay, in this one, we got the breakdown and then we reversed right away um, on the dollar. So we are actually two of the longest consolidations in history for the dollar have actually taken place in just the last few years. You gotta go all the way back to the 80s, or sorry, the 70s to get that. And of course, the 70s consolidation is what produced this huge bull run in the 80s. All right. Now, what about length of time on the upside? The dollar bull market, if you're defining it as making um, or as not making a new 52 week low on a closing basis, OK, which is the red line. OK, we did not make a new 52 week low on a closing basis for. 260 weeks. It's a long time. The only comparable situation is the rally in the 80s. 
All right, now once that broke on the 52 week, you know, when you got a 52 week low, you actually got a, a rally and then the market continued to fall apart. The dollar went into this big bear trend. I'm looking for something similar to happen here. I'm looking for a big dollar bear trend to take place. Okay, um, simply this market, this bull rally may have died of old age. Um, I get a lot of pushback on this. Not a lot of people agree with me, uh, and that's fine. It's actually better that way. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I'm looking at. So there's some big picture stuff on the dollar, and, you know, one of the reasons why I think that the, uh, the dollar, for lack of a better term, is screwed for quite a while. And... That's that. All right, so there's the euro. We looked at the euro. The pound, again, it, you know, it, pay attention to the longer-term stuff. I mean, at this point, there's really no sense in trying to give you guys stuff on this. I mean, really. It, you know, headline come out, headline this, headline that. The only things I'll say, I'll pay attention to 39.14 if, it's, if we hit that level on Monday. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Pound just ripped. I would have been well in the money. Instead, I got stopped out down here at 40.70. So, there you go. <clears throat> We're actually getting into the median line here. So, this could actually be resistance. But again, I'm not screwing around with this. Um, you know, for, let's give it this way. 43.30. Okay. And 40 or 39.14. Like those are the two levels I'd trade. I wouldn't trade anything else at this point. Everything else to me is just uh, kind of messy BS, like whatever. I don't want to touch it. That's just for pound, obviously. Um, dollar yen. Might have made a low, a bigger low today. I don't know, the, I, you know, last night after BOJ came out, I, we went through, obviously didn't even, I don't even think it stopped at 105.19, but I noted um, on Twitter that uh, 103.73 was the next level. And look what happened. We got 103.70, uh, well, 103.50 something, but 103.73 was the May 2013 high. And we've come into that, obviously. You've also got just a line that goes off the lows, August, May, and uh, here we are in June. And we've hit those levels. And it's obviously pretty panicky out there, no? Uh, everyone's kind of freaking out, um, kind of, you know, stuff that happens at lows. Um, I actually bought dollar yen last night at 103.80, and then I got stopped out at break even <laughs> today. Check this out. If I can. This is kind of funny. So. I bought it. I was sleeping. But I put an order to buy it at 103.80 because I was like 103.73 is a big level. We ripped. I was like, I'm not taking a loss on this trade because it's really just that's what it was. Just kind of looking. And then I went to break even to stop me out at 75, went higher. So there you go. There's trading for you sometimes. Um, but dollar yen, here's the short term. Here's a here's a four hour chart. OK, again, the same line that goes back here. Look, folks, we've been going down for uh, a year now. The high last year was on June 5th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can count 13 waves down. I'll make a note of that. You can count 13 waves down. We may have bottomed um, for a bit, like for a while. And here's the short term stuff. So I'd follow this near term, okay? Even where we stopped this morning, right, uh, 104.47, the high there. So in the BOJ level is 104.82. So 
So, you know, be looking for perhaps um, the, uh, you know, dollar yen to, to maybe gain some traction, okay, on the upside here. Of the commodity currencies. This chart from last night. Is this the one? Yeah, this was it. 72.82. We talked about that. Uh, we spiked this morning into 72.85 is the low. So pretty good touch on support. Actually touching right here. Um, resistance. Look, I'm bullish. Aussie, again, I'm bearish the dollar, okay? And here's an eight-hour chart. I'm actually going to make a big reversal here, assuming we don't reverse the reversal of the reversal today. Um, we're actually coming back into where we opened the week, believe it or not. Um, so, you know, this to me is an uptrend. Um, up until, until, and this part's important, up until you get up into like the 77 region, and that's when I think that you could have trouble and that you might actually want to go the other way. Um, the reason for that is this chart, weekly chart, okay? So, you know, on that four-hour chart, daily chart, you have a nice uptrend going on, okay? Because we do have the slope. It's not, it's not drawn here, but we have the slope on that daily, as you know. Um, on the weekly chart, obviously still big downtrends going on here, and we've just found basically really solid support from a former downtrend turned, uh, you know, support resistance, support again line. We came to 75, pulled off. I think we go up to 77 or so, 7707 weekly reversal. Uh, you've got the high up there from uh, 5, 6. That's, I believe, or from May, which was when they cut rates. And you've got slope stuff a little higher. So that read, that's what I'm saying. I'm kind of bull, I'm bullish Aussie until, until at least 77. And at that point you could actually maybe look to go short um, for a pullback uh, or maybe something even more, you know, I, I don't know. We'll have to see. Remember there was that Barron's cover and it was like over here and they were talking about being bullish Aussie. So that made me think that maybe Aussie's not done yet, but um but it's, you know, it's a possibility, I guess, given the bullish slope. It really, we'll learn more up here. So the pressure's on the upside, I think, until at least 77 and, you know, uh, and maybe seven, maybe a little mid 77 for as far as Aussie's concerned. Um, Kiwi still very much up in the air for me. Um, you know, the long term lines, you know, we came into 71, 30 area. But then again, we, as you know, from recent writings uh, up closer to 72.30, even 72.60 might be the spot. Um, we've been looking at the near-term picture the last few days in the swing updates. And here's that. So remember, I was looking at maybe getting, uh, per perhaps getting a, um, you know, an ABC rally from here. Okay, so that could still happen. You could get A, B, C, and trade up into 71. In fact, this could be something like this. You would actually have two equal legs at 7098. 7104 is the close from, um, you know, from that day. What was that? 69 when you had the uh, R, B, and Z kind of ripperoo on the upside. Um, I have these lines drawn in. These are something that you know, I'm just kind of following to see if it if it if it works at all. You can see that if you just it's a former trend line it actually ends up being the pitchfork as well, which is interesting. By no means are these like confirmed or operable. You haven't really done anything yet, right, to suggest that. Like you need to see the market turn down here, um, at which point you'd look towards 68.90 or so. My kind of caution with this is Kiwi. You know, I again, I'm, I'm a, my bigger thing is like bearish dollar, and that surprises are going to come on the dollar bearish side. So I'm not 
chomping at the bit to like put out an order to be short Kiwi. It's something like, you know, we're really tentative on it. Um, but you know, the, the possibility of a failed breakout is there by failed breakout. I mean the move up above, you know, the 70 fifties and you do have, you know, it's not, you're not, it's not like complete BS. Like you do have, you do have some long-term levels here, right? My worry is that the net is that the more important long-term levels, not until 7260 or so 7280, right? Uh, and maybe that coincides with Aussie getting up to 77 and change. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, still tracking on that 71 spot, right? 71, you know, that could end up being uh, an area in which you do see some selling pressure come in um, for the New Zealand dollar. <clears throat> What about dollar cad? So this one's actually been pretty clean, no? We had talked about this slope here. Um, this was the weekend piece, the weekend chart posted. So again, what you've got going on here from the Melo, okay? is three waves up, clear as day, three waves down, again, clear as day. I guess you can get rid of that. And then we're turning up pretty sharply. So when you have something like this, where you have a three and a three, it's either going to be most, more than likely, it's either going to be a triangle or it's going to be a flat, right? A triangle, self-explanatory, right? You go like this and you bring in the, you go like uh S&P, we'll look at that in a little bit. Triangle, you know, you'd go, you know, like this, you know, triangle like this, right? And then you'd probably go back lower because you previous trend, right? Now, I don't know if that's the case. Um, and I'm questioning whether or not the, that, I'm questioning whether or not that's the case primarily because the rally that you've got here, like so when we had this three and this three, um, and going to the short term chart, remember we had I had this labeled like this. Like we had resistance up here and then pull back. We were looking for a pullback. So if you would have gotten a pullback here for a long into 28, 20, 40 or whatever, 36, and then you had gotten to move higher, you'd have had a cleaner three-wave rally, right? You would have had like an A, B, C rally. What we've got instead is a pretty nasty push higher so far, right? Now we have stopped right at the trend line. So maybe we do come back into here. Anything seems possible in this market um, right now. And before you go higher, but the momentum's so strong in this that I'm wondering if it's not a C wave at this point in which, which would mean you get up probably closer to this channel up here at some point, which would be in the 33s. Okay. So that's certainly something to potentially, um, you know, or to keep in the back of your mind. All right. So, you know, the trading levels on dollar CAD are outlined with the slope, right? You might watch 2910, former support, former consolidation area, um, you know, but where I'm going with this is basically EuroCAD, which seems to it's be it's acting pretty pretty well, right? So with EuroCAD, <clears throat> it's a short term chart. Let's go to the the bigger the bigger chart, if you will. So EuroCAD. Again, you've got a lot going on that's in, on this chart that indicates um, potential for a pretty, you know, strong, uh, strong move to the upside, right? So the strongest moves come in the third or C wave positions in Elliott, and you know this is a third wave here, right? 
Well, you've got a move up, a sideways move down, and the next sequence will be move up, right? It doesn't mean that you can't go sideways for a little longer. All it means is that you can put yourself in position to catch the big move or not. And uh, in this case, we also have looks like a bottoming head and shoulders pattern, right? So it's another possibility, okay? Uh, what we also have going on for us are very good price levels. We had, again, remember we had the two equal legs down, right? A, B, C, kind of X wave, and then another drop, 43.36. We bottomed very close to that. Um, we had a uh, weekly reversal resistance as well, which was 43.65, okay? So there's a lot going on. The first test was really the uh, the month open that kind of didn't really do a whole lot because of all the craziness that was going on with, uh, you know, with the overnight session. You went, you know, we went bonkers to the upside. But you do have this trend line up here looks to be, uh, you know, a little higher, probably near 46.80 or so. Um, in the short term picture for this chart. is constructive, as you can see, all we're doing here is going with the trend line off these lows. That alone obviously doesn't mean a whole lot because it touches two points, doesn't touch a whole lot, right? But guess what, the angle of it seems to be right, okay? And I say that because look where you extend it here, it cuts through these levels, which was resistance on the run up. And guess what? That was just support. And I tweeted this out before, right before it happened, right? So this is not like making it up uh, in, you know, after the fact. We did get support there, right? It was actually right at 145. It was one tick away from 145. So you may very well have a low here. If we continue to work higher off of this, then I will be moving the stop. Adam asking about Eurocad, am I still long? Hell yeah, I'm still long. I think this thing's gonna go to like 153, okay? I'm really bullish on this. I, you know, I'm looking to add to this trade, okay? If it breaks out to the upside again, right? So what we wanna see is this market, you know, base here, move higher again, right get through this resistance okay then you're floating a real nice you know gain and you look to tighten it up more and see where you can add to that position okay see where you can add to that position um what do we have here that could be interesting you know what as well i don't know what it looks like right now because obviously Things have gone quite haywire, but <clears throat> actually looks fine. So I talked about being uh, bullish, you know, kind of dollar cat and but also bullish Aussie dollar and also bullish Euro dollar. Am I just bullish everything? Not the dollar, I'm bearish the dollar. But Here's Aussie CAD. Now there, there's better things to trade, but check this out. This is, you know, you have this bottoming head and shoulders pattern Aussie CAD as well. And we looked at this um, during one of the webinars. Maybe it was the last webinar. It might've been last Wednesday. And it talked about, you've got price action since the 2013 low. You've got a leg up, a leg down, a leg up, a leg down, probably headed higher and a leg up. Okay, good things come in like threes and fives. Right. So meaning that since August 2013, this might be a triangle, A, B, C, D, E. It's just a possibility. Whatever it is, it still points higher from here. And then you look at this and you've got a bullish structure to work with. OK. So, you know, that also kind of inspires confidence, if you will, in the call. So, you know, so to speak, uh, for higher, you know, uh, currencies against the Canadian dollar. OK. And then let's look at the macro factors, 
right? What's crude oil doing? Well, crude oil, I was looking for crude to come into here and make continue on a 56, but remember the uh, picture of Gartman with his ultimate momentum trade? Uh, that was right here. We did go higher the next day, and since then, it's just been straight down. Um, so crude oil has basically broken its support and its uptrend, which means, you know, it probably light, you know, probably um, uh, supportive, I should say, of um, of, a, of a CAD weakening. Adam asked, do I trade? Yes, I do. I trade crude. I trade S&Ps. Uh, Absolutely. Um, so, in fact, what was the, if we go back to that chart, remember, sometimes we fool ourselves, right? But what was this? Six, seven? Yeah, so here it was. So this, you remember this chart? We talked about the new high in crude, not a new high in CAD, in other words, not a low in dollar CAD. Well, guess what? The ultimate momentum trade, crude oil. Okay, we ended up publishing that, and that ended up being um, the high for the move. Okay, so that was right. That was right there. Next day was up and the market fell apart. Um, point is, is pay attention to these, you know, uh, what do you want to call them? Divergences that you tend to see with crude and CAD. They, they, you know, they take place obviously at, uh, at very important junctures. Um, they don't happen a lot that makes them important on their, on their own, but <clears throat> we just got one. So moving forward, you know, if this, I think the low for crude oil is in, like the cycle low, okay? But let's say we get a pullback to 37 bucks. I don't know. The 200-day average is here at 40. Maybe it's even 40. It'd still be a hell of a drop, okay? If we get a drop down there, I don't know. Maybe dollar cad's pushing against its highs. I don't know. All I'm saying is, you know, when you get the divergence in play, that t that will that will trigger the next big turn as it tends to always do okay so just you know kind of a reminder on those on those dynamics um, Eurocad by the way Eurocad <clears throat> I do think the area that we could get to would be the 53 54 area um, it's a lot of stuff up there. You've got will be if you if this is a C wave, it'd be where the six one eight extension, okay, so of wave A, excuse me. So where the bottom of wave B times one point six one eight of this rally would equal fifty three fifty nine. It's also the six one eight retracement of the rally or sorry, the decline from the January high. So you've got and this is a five wave drop, right? So you know up into 53, 50, 60, 54, whatever, okay, you know, 800 pips higher, and then you might actually have a massive selling opportunity, right? So um, EuroCAD might be the place to be for a while as far as trading is concerned. You get a clean pattern like this. It doesn't happen too often. You get the five down, a clean A, what looks like a clean B, okay, um, and then we're getting good short-term action on it as well. Uh, and, you know, look, if the stock market really is in trouble, like really actually is screwed, um, you know, then you're going to get good juice on these euro commodity currencies. I wouldn't be surprised if the euro comes back as the whole, you know, liquidation, not a safe haven, but liquidity deal. Um, and then, you know, in the, because of the hedging and then you get, you know, CAD getting hit because of crude and growth and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going for this trade, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, near term focus, obviously 4680, you get through there, then can look at maybe getting more aggressive. 
what else shall we take a look at? There were some questions here, Aussie and Cadian. Let's, I'll look at that in a moment. Let's look first, let's take a look at the S&P 500. So remember, I was looking for us to get to 2200 and then really uh, fail again. Um, but we have turned down. When you look at this monthly chart though, I mean, keep it in perspective, we haven't even we haven't even gone below the prior month's low um, at this point. So that would be all the way down at 2026. But if we have topped, then you're gonna wanna follow this. Okay, so you got the old trend line, which pointed this out yesterday, which was broken, it was resistance, it was resistance again on Yellen, okay. Um, that's pretty bearish. Wondering if you have, if this slope ends up being something to work with, then this line's resistance, it was actually resistance yesterday, and then we hit the median line today, have come back, so I'd watch this level again um, for resistance. Nothing in the S&P really surprises me. I think it's kind of at this point, other than option stuff, it's very difficult to take any money out of the S&P at this point. Um, but these are just the levels I'd watch. Okay, I'd watch the slope. If you start to get a working slope, you know, the market trading off these levels, then maybe there's something good to happen. You know, um, I don't, you know, it's, uh, I don't have a very strong opinion at this point. I would have a strong opinion if we traded at 2200 in July, I'd be looking for a major top um, and for more or less a crash over the next, you know, a couple months. But, you know, we're at 2068 right now. So no idea if that's actually going to happen. Oh, dollar Swiss, Mir, absolutely. All right. Okay, so here's dollar Swiss. Um, to me, again, I'm bearish <clears throat> dollars. Um, what you have here, so remember I thought we had a bullish wedge. And this was the breakout, and this was the breakdown failure. So a failed breakout is essentially a bearish signal in its own right. Now, there could be a lot of other stuff that goes on here, right? doesn't mean you have to have an opinion on the market, actually. Um, I'm actually looking for resistance pretty much now. I mean, this old line here. It's close to 96.90. That's where I'd be looking for resistance. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything good on the short term. Uh, and that's the case with a lot of these markets at the moment. Big picture, the inability of dollar Swiss, you gotta look at a log chart, the inability of dollar Swiss to break out. Okay, November, this was a move. It was critical, it was an important breakout, and it failed. Okay, so to me, that highlights um, kind of like big time worry for dollar Swiss. Like, you know, it, the fact that you failed at this resistance so many times, we've traded around it for one, two, three, four, you know, five, six of the last seven months we've been trading on this resistance. Okay. Uh, copper did something similar, actually, over the last few years. It continued to trade on resistance, and then it finally just started to fall out of bed. All right. So there does seem to be probably, you know, a good deal of selling up here. And 
you know, it, if this thing gets below 9440, watch out because it's going like a thousand bit lower. Uh, but as far as near term picture, really nothing uh, that good or that confident to trade on as far as I'm concerned. Um, look at Aussie yen, CAD yen, uh, silver. There's a question on silver. Aussie yen, it's a monthly chart. Aussie yen. Let's go to a daily chart. It would look like to me that the next support would be down here somewhere. On this chart. Here's the really clean one though. This is like the really clean channel on Aussie yen. Why do I have that in bold? I don't know. Um, it's 2012 low from June, actually. It's interesting. So here's your channels, okay? Um, the lower channel is pretty far down there. Not saying it's going to get there. I don't know if it gets there, and that's another, that's another thing. Clearly, this channel has been going on for a while. Okay, the opportunity in this market, in my opinion, is not to be shorting it at this point. All right, um, it's actually at this point to do nothing but wait and see if the market bases around here. Today feels like some like some sort of a, a a pivot day, doesn't it? It's like real panicky. People are freaking out. You know, um, you're trading down to huge. You know, BOJ dollar yen came into big support. Aussie dollar came into support from the year open. Um, you know, so I do feel like there could be an inflection point here. And on this chart, Aussie yen. Look, you've got – it wouldn't be the first time that you traded off these levels. Like this is the 50 line on this on this channel, okay? In the last couple lows, obviously the big lows are not until channel support, okay? So if you get to channel support, okay, look for support. But – if the market turns up here and you start to base, all right, and you start to form some sort of a reversal pattern or whatever, okay, what that means is that you will have made a higher floor, okay, and that's bullish. That would mean that you've made a higher floor, therefore you're going to expect a higher ceiling, which means you'd be looking for a bigger move to the upside. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying that's how you would look at a market like this because you look at a market that's been in this channel. It's been going on since November of 2014. It's extremely clean. Okay. It, not just resistance, but at support as well. And so with the understanding that today's market, you know, today's day kind of has this feeling of inflection in it or panic or whatever. You know, then you might actually, and, and the fact that you've also found support here before, you know, might mean that you actually end up getting, um, you know, something of a attempt at a low. Also, from a different perspective, you do have actually five waves down from this point, from the March high. One, two, three triangle four five in fact you could go a little deeper on this let's see where the triangle objective is 75 70 what's today's low 75 58 a b c x a b c 
don't have anything on the measured stuff to way down there. Yeah. So that would be really far down. See where the retracements are from the low in 2008. The 61.8 is actually pretty much in line with the uh, 2012 low, 74.26. So maybe something to pay attention to. So that would be down here. So nothing on the immediate to do here, but certainly uh, in a getting into a good area for something to happen on the upside. Let's look at some crashy type panic indicators and see if we can anything pops up so you've actually got this is synthetic volatility reading you've actually got the highest reading outside of the financial crisis right now going back to 2001 okay you can see when this indicator is really high is when you get lows, all right? So like here and here, right here, all that. Obviously, when the world falls apart, as it did here, um, it can go a lot higher. I mean, this is, this, is the, this is a synthetic volatility indicator. It's a very simple calculation. <clears throat> Um, take the highest high over X amount of time, X amount of periods in the lowest low over X amount of periods. I do 52 weeks. Uh, take the hot, that, that high period, whatever the highest high is, subtract the low, divide it by the highest high, multiply it by a hundred and you get, you get this. Okay. Um, so that gives you synthetic volatility. Dollar yen, for example, not surprisingly, the highest reading going back to 2011, actually. Okay. This can get higher, but just saying, getting close to the, that period where things could start to go the other way. Um, daily basis. I'm sure pound yen is probably pretty crazy. Yeah. There's pound yen. Pound yen, by the way, it's, uh, that was, the, remember, 4820, the 2000, low and then these lows here we obviously went all the way down to 145 40 today uh interesting that we're you're covering and we could close up here uh, you know again this is like the highest risk trade possible because of brexit stuff but just saying um could be a possibility moving forward once the dust settles <clears throat> you know like let everyone else lose all their money trying to trade during all the crazy stuff and then we'll be there to pick up the ashes pound yen for example here's the wave count that i had remember we were looking for this triangle like right here i was like a b right c d and then looking for one e no didn't get it too bad if we did that would have been the hell of a sell um anyway this is going to be a hell of a buy at some point, too. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, I see what's gone on here. Check this out. So remember we talked about old channels. A 
Look at this. Okay. This is why I have this channel drawn. Because it goes through the gap in 2013, or sorry, 2012, right here. As you know, gaps are important. And a channel that cuts through a gap is a really important one. So look at today. It's literally the low. I wonder if that was the low. It's possible. It would not be a surprise, put it that way. But man, that's a hard trade to pull off, isn't it? Buy that thing. I'll stick with EuroCAD at the moment. Um, what else do we have? We had questions about uh, CAD Yen. Silver. Hossein, what's up, Hossein? How you doing? I want to ask about silver. CAD Yen, sure. So... Take a look at CAD Yen here. Remember, I'm pretty bearish on CAD just because of the whole crude oil thing. So I wouldn't be surprised to see CAD Yen come off. Um, well, you got a trend line down here. It's a pretty big one. It's the 2009-2011 one. And, you know, if... I'm at all right on this CAD thing, then I don't think this is going to hold. Um, if you get through here, then you're talking about seventy-two, which is the um, weekly low close from January twenty-nine. It's also basically the low from two thousand eleven weekly reversal support okay take a look at a daily chart get rid of that get rid of that get rid of that okay so this appears to be the right thing right so let's see where these come in So take it off the low, okay? Take it off the low and take it off some prior lows. It only goes off one low, so I wouldn't really pay any attention to that, to be honest with you. Pay attention to this one because you got this low here. And this low here, okay? So basically, that puts you down here, okay, on a break. And again, this is one that I do think will break because you've got um, what I think is going to be a weak Canadian dollar with the break that we've had in crude oil, okay? <clears throat> so... With this, uh, CAD Yen, as far as where you might get resistance, you can go short term, do a short term channel, fork, whatever you want to call it. And if you were to get a rebound, you know, on this, and again, I think that the this stuff is. Uh, I have to download data. Damn it. Hold on. Let me go to a different chart. All right. So basically looking for the downtrend on the short term on this to get on. So you've just rallied or bounced, I should say, from here. Um, Uh, 
I mean, essentially you have resistance at the median line, which is pretty much like right here, right? Because you'd had support here, former support. So watch for former support to become resistance, which is basically like right now. I mean, it's a little higher. It's 80. It's like 80, 80, 80, 80. Okay. You know, you've had, um, you know, with the whole yen thing, I'm not too comfortable buying yen down here. And look at, you know, for example, here's here's euro yen. Euro yen itself is at a giant level. It's huge. Okay. We have two equal legs down from the highs. Um, we actually have a pitchfork. There's a 50 line on the pitchfork. It's right here. Okay. In fact, for those of you that are like, think it's completely arbitrary or something, um, I'll draw it. So let's go over this. Check this out. <clears throat> okay. 618 of the entire thing is 115.37. Today's high low is 115.49. Pitchfork. Oops. Hello. There we go. So here's the 50 line. Okay. The other 50 line was pretty good in its own right. You had some nice trades around there. Got that too. So Euro Yen um, is at a support level. Again, um, it's another reason why I would rather stick with Euro CAD, I think, than go chasing CAD Yen, right? Um, you know, it, I haven't had too much luck with the, with the Yen this year. <laughs> I it, trading it, uh, looking for, you know, highs and early in the year, selling it, got stopped out every time I sold it. Uh, and then it would crash. I don't, you know, it's tough. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting long-term chart, I'd say, right? So, you know, you could turn up here. It would not be out of the realm of possibility to see a pretty sharp turn up at that on Euro Yen. Okay, silver. Hossein asking about silver. Sure thing. Silver. So we'll look at the CFD, I'm assuming, is what you want to look at. I actually think I have one. Looked at it before. It's the weekly chart. Okay, so here's the 240 daily chart. You have a divergence today, actually. This is, um, you had a new high in gold today and not a new high in silver, which actually is typical of kind of an inflection point, okay, and in, in potentially seeing you know, a turn in the market, uh, and you are getting a pretty nasty reversal today in silver. So again, new high in gold, not confirmed by silver. Very well could see some pressure on the downside um, from here. This is the fork to follow on the daily chart, pretty clean. And if you move into a 240 minute chart, Couple things to look at here. This one, I'd watch that for support. 
So draw this pitchfork, okay, Hossein, eight, uh, August low, uh, October high, December low. And then you take hold on. Okay, and take a parallel. Unfortunately, they don't have a tool to make sliding parallels, which is kind of annoying. Uh, if they did, it'd be great. And then slide that on this, okay? This seems to be the right slope to follow. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff going on here, right? With It connects off here, good amount of trading on it, right? Not precise all the time, but at times it was, it has been. Consolidation, okay, a little, a little resistance. Okay, so that is basically where you're watching for support. And it lines up fairly well with uh, horizontal levels. Okay, so like, you know, if you go here, right, and that, you can see that goes across all these, all these, all this stuff here, right? So the former floor here, um, that's where I'd be looking. So basically what I'm telling you is I think that we pull back here. Okay. Um, you know, for several reasons, but one being that we've pulled off a of horizontal level anyway, it's, it's the high back here from, from May, 2015, uh, but gold, made a new high silver didn't so you do have a a solid uh, divergence in place uh, but on this pullback I'd start watching for support at 1692 um, really the 1672 to 92 region is one in which I'd I'd be aware of as far as uh, support concerned okay that's where I'd really look for that support in those markets or in that market, you know. Now, eventually, you know, I am pretty bullish to silvers, the silver miners. I mean, uh, or silver and miners. For example, there's a tra a, a stock that I own. <clears throat> and this is pretty wild. Um, it's a silver core mines. Silver core metals, okay. This was a, find it. Oh, whatever. This was a uh, stock that was once trading up 20 bucks. Earlier this year, it bottomed at 41 cents. It's now trading at $2 and 19 cents, okay. Um, so the place to be when you're trying to trade silver, I think, because silver is so damn volatile, but some of these silver miners, man, they can go, they just go bonkers. Now, look, this thing's gone, it's gone up again from 40 cents to 240. Okay. It's like 500%. It's rallied. Okay. Um, the low is 92 cents from 2008. That level could be support at some point. Um, you know, you're trading at this level right now, which actually is around a median line. I'd call it resistance. Um, so I know this has really nothing to do with FX, but that is something that you might want to potentially pay attention to. I don't know. Um, if you're into the metals and whatnot. And look at that pound dollar. Man, it stopped out right there. The ticker for that is a because it's a it's this is like the most risky thing in the world. Okay, it's SVMLF. It used to be SVM, but then it was delisted because they fell under a dollar. So it'll probably be listed at some point again, I would assume.
All right. Well, the way things are looking at this, it might be putting in another order to buy the euro. Um, if this was the low, you know, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that as far as finding supports concerned. Right. I mean, look at that. It's right on it. Let's look at the dollar index. I mean, it looks like crap, doesn't it? I mean, that's just, that's hideous. Pretty, pretty wild. All right, so I'm going to end it there. Um, funny enough, after all the crap that's happened this week with the intraday stuff, I actually more or less... Nothing's really changed, right? <laughs> I mean, coming into the week, the euro is essentially unchanged on the week, It's even though it's all over the place. Um, you know, the bearish dollar story, I think, is the right one. I really do. You know, I know it's tough to believe it. Um, Matthew saying he's disagreeing. Too much evidence over many dollar pairs. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what makes a market, right? Um, as far as Euro pound, yeah, let's take a look there. And I mean, I guess, you know, Matthew too, I'm, you know, I, I'd be willing to buy dollar cad at the right place. Right. Um, but it just, this is very, see, I mean, the levels in Aussie in Euro like doesn't get better than that. I mean, 72, 80, the year open, month open and trend line and all kinds of stuff for, for Euro. Let's take a look. You said Euro pound. Yeah, I mean, it could have for some big long-term resistance up here. Right. I mean, this is the channel. Okay. Didn't quite get to it uh, today. But certainly putting in big reversal today on euro pound. So, yeah, it did look a little lower here. Anywho, I am going to call it a day for the webinar. Uh, we'll get this up and archived for everyone as soon as possible. And... Uh, Everyone uh, have a great rest of your week, okay? And we'll talk soon. All right, bye.